In the last video, you saw us create a custom tab in a Microsoft Teams app and update it to support single sign-on to obtain an ID token from Microsoft Teams and Azure AD. So at this point, our tab uses the Microsoft Teams SSO support to obtain an ID token for the current user. This token though can only be used to identify the user. It can't be used to authenticate uh, requests with Microsoft Graph. So to submit requests to Microsoft Graph, I'm gonna to need to include an access token with the necessary permissions for Microsoft Graph for the current user. So now we can update our project to obtain an access token for Microsoft Graph by implementing the OBO flow. So inside of our project, um, let's find this .env file. Now I've already added the secret, but there's something else I'm gonna to need to add as well. I'm gonna also need to add another property here for scopes. Now what this is, is a space delimited list of all the permissions that our app or access token is going to need to uh, request. So if I go back to Edge and I look at a list of all the permissions, you see here that we've got a handful of permissions, user read, profile, open ID, offline access, and email. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add those as a space delimited list. So it's https graph.microsoft.com slash user.read, email, open ID, profile, offline, access. So there's all of our permissions. Now, the next step is to update the server-side API to add support for using ID tokens that are obtained by Microsoft Teams for OBO access tokens. Uh, then I can then use that to submit request to Microsoft Graph. Now, we're gonna use two dependencies that are already in this project. So one of them we're gonna use is called Axios. That is used to make HTTP requests uh, from um, a server-side uh, node. Uh, and then the other one we're gonna use here is the JWDD code, and that's gonna be useful for um, parsing the ID token that we get back. So I'm gonna come over here to our server.ts file, and I'm gonna add import statements for both of those things. So we're gonna do an import from JWT And we're also going to add an import statement from Axios. And what we're going to want is we're going to grab everything as Axios. And then we're also going to want to grab an Axios response object as well. So we have both of those. Now, the next thing we want to do is we need to uh, add support for a new endpoint to process the token uh, exchange. So I'm gonna find the part right after we set the port and right before we spin up the web server, and I'm gonna paste in a big block of code. Now, let me explain what this code is doing. So what this code does is it's first gonna say uh, to hook into the HTTP GET request for the endpoint exchange SSO token for an OBO token. It's gonna get the client ID and client secret from our environment variables, and then it's also gonna get the ID token from the SSO token query string parameter on the request. The endpoint that it's gonna to go to is gonna be the Microsoft um, Azure AD token exchange endpoint, but it's also specifying the tenant ID that's defined in the ID token uh, that was passed in. It's then gonna create an object that contains all the parameters we need to submit as part of the request, including the grant type, the Azure AD app that we're using to authenticate, the assertion we're making, which is using the ID token, uh, how we plan on using this token, it's gonna to be used as an OBO token, and then a list of all the permissions that the token, that the access token should have. I'm then gonna convert that entire um, uh, set of parameters to a, um, an encoded U, uh, form, uh, a URL encoded form body payload. Uh, so I'm gonna do that by just walking through all the keys of that object, and I'm simply gonna um, put string them together as an encoded URI uh, string. I'm then gonna set the headers or create a headers object and then submit the request. So that is gonna give us a response and assuming the response comes back successfully, I'm then gonna return back the data we got back to the caller. Now, I have a bunch of other error trapping code that we see right here. I'm not gonna run through that right now, but you can refer to that and look at that later uh, if you're interested. 
And with the server-side API all set, we can now update the SSO tab to exchange the ID token obtained by Microsoft Teams and its SSO support um, for an access token that can be used to authenticate requests for Microsoft Graph. So let's go back to our tab. And in our import statements that you see listed here, I'm gonna add in another import hook, uh, another hook uh, from, from React called the use callback. Now this is really useful whenever I wanna make a call to some other endpoint. Um, and then I'm gonna also find the spot that contains where we're setting all of these different state values. So I'm gonna go ahead and add two more. One of them is gonna be for the token, the ID token that we get from Microsoft Teams. And then the next one is gonna be for the access token that we get uh, for uh, Microsoft Graph that we're gonna use. Now, in our use effect that you see right here, our use effect hook, um, this one is the one that is checking to see if we're in Teams, call the get off token when this uh, loads. So it's gonna change whenever this Teams um, um, property or, or state property updates. So if we're inside of Microsoft Teams, it's going to go fetch the, the auth token. When this is successful, it's going to then call our success callback, which passes in the token. And then we are going to decode the token and set the name of the current user equal to the name property uh, that was inside the token. And then we notify Microsoft Teams of the success. Now, one of the things I wanna do right before we notify success is that I want to save the token that we get. So I'm gonna set, uh, call our state um, setter as set, set SSO token equal to the token that was passed in. So now we're gonna save a copy of our um, ID token that we obtain. Now, in order to submit requests to Microsoft Graph, I need to exchange the ID token that we got as part of this SSO process for an access token. So this is gonna be an asynchronous request to the server-side API endpoint that I just implemented a moment ago. So I'm gonna add a new effect or a new uh, hook using the callback or the use callback hook that's gonna be called exchange SSO token for an OBO token. So here what this method's doing is that this is going to submit a request for our, uh, to the endpoint that we just created it's gonna pass in our SSO token as a query string parameter. And when it gets the response back, that's gonna be the, um, the payload that we get back. That's the actual uh, access token or the, the full request, the full response that we get back uh, from the OBO request. So I know that that payload that we get back has an access token property and I'm gonna set that to our state value. So here I'm just doing a little bit more error trapping and this is where uh, I wanna do a check to see uh, if consent is required, and I should, I should handle that as well. So to initiate this process, I'm gonna go ahead and add in another React hook right here for this effect that simply says, whenever the SSO token property is set, I want this, uh, I want to go through and, and call our exchange SSO token for an OBO token. So at this point, our tab has an access token that's gonna to authenticate requests to Microsoft Graph. So the next step is to submit a request to Microsoft Graph. Uh, 